There's another look at the San Antonio area a few days ago. Thank you very much to Greg for that footage. So can anybody identify what storm this was? Obviously it's coming up from the southwest there. You can see a hook echo developing. And let's go to the base velocity. You can see a very tight couplet. There it is moving north. So what is that? So I did a bit of trickery. What you're actually looking at is the Dodge City radar. Now does anybody recognize what storm that is? Yeah, I superimposed the Greensburg storm on the Fort Worth radar, so that probably threw some of you for a loop. But it's interesting to consider a cell like Greensburg, what would have happened if that was moving into the DFW area. So there you go. That was definitely a terrible storm. It hit Greensburg after dark on May 4th, 2007. 13 people were killed, 65 were injured, quarter of a billion dollars in damage. It was the first EF5 rated tornado. So that's a look at that particular storm. So let's shift gears and look at the weather for today. Pretty extensive MCS across the Midwest area. The bulk of it is from Kentucky into Illinois, and we've got a mesoscale convective vortex across southern Illinois right now. There's a look at it on the visible satellite imagery moving across St. Louis earlier this morning into southern Illinois. You can see that spin in the air kind of a spiraling appearance to the cloud textures. There's a look at what that MCV looked like at 700 millibars earlier this morning. That's a tracking across Illinois and that's coupled with a 40 to 50 knot low level jet. The 850 millibar chart shows that it is fairly veered and by the time we get up to the afternoon hours it is predominantly west and southwest. Some other showers and light storms further up north towards Chicago and South Bend. And further up north, we've got a separate system with showers and thunderstorms around the Winnipeg area. Coming back down into the U.S., it is starting to look a little bit like early summer. We see these extensive east-west boundaries. Not much advection north or south. And we're going to take a look at this dry line, for example, extending down into Texas. That divides this drier air in West Texas from the rich tropical air further out to the east. Looks like the moisture axis runs about like that from Houston up to Oklahoma City. So we're getting just a little bit of upslope flow along the Interstate 40 area in the Texas Panhandle down into southwestern Oklahoma. Now I do know we've been quite capped, so if we had a little bit less of that capping, a little bit deeper moisture, we could almost certainly get some severe weather out of this, but I'm a little bit skeptical for today. This cold front is moving south through Roswell and Lubbock at this hour, so that could be a factor later. And then we've got this outflow boundary from the overnight MCS that was left by this thing as it moved from Kansas into Missouri into Kentucky, and it laid down that boundary on the tail end. The actual polar front that is probably this thing across Kansas out into Kentucky and Virginia and connecting back up into this other system out in the Atlantic. And we're not going to go too far out into the Pacific. We're starting to focus on the mesoscale so we do have to have this map kind of zoomed in. So we're not going to be taking a look at the Aleutians at Greenland and so on, but we'll try to cover a little bit of Alaska up there. Um, I forgot to mention the storm track. Yeah, that's coming right into Washington and British Columbia. So some very rainy weather through that part of the country. That's definitely great news. It was only 11 months ago that they got that 120 degree weather in Oregon and British Columbia. 
and part of that was due to very low vegetation moisture. I hope this year has a much different outcome. And up there in Alaska, it is cool. Temperatures in the 40s and 30s. Looks like we've got this persistent stationary front along the Brooks Range into the Inuvik area. Then, looking across the Canadian High Arctic, continued very cold weather for this time of year. Temperatures only in the teens. We should start seeing 20s and 30s around this time of the year. And that's just cold enough to produce some snow in Hudson Bay. Snow coming down across Labrador into Quebec. That cold air filtering down into the northeastern U.S. Kind of a cold start in upstate New York to the day. And then we circle back south and we get into that tropical air as we move into Georgia and Florida. So this time of year, we're highly keyed in on the SPC outlooks. We are in the middle of severe weather season, the spring season, especially in the Great Plains. The prospects for today, though, not looking all that great. This has got the look of upslope flow thunderstorms across northwestern Oklahoma into southwestern Kansas. This is going to be redevelopment along the leading edge of that MCS as it moves through Kentucky. And up in Minnesota, that new frontal system that's going to have an effect on that area, just enough moisture to support storms. It's always a good idea to resolve that with your surface chart. We had that one area up there in Minnesota that's going to be near that warm front ahead of that system. The other, it's kind of an oddball because we're not really focusing on the triple point and on the dry line. Most of that's up in this region. And then, of course, the area in Kentucky ahead of that MCV. The high-resolution rapid refresh shows the general picture for today. Elevated storms developing in Colorado, moving into Kansas and Oklahoma this evening. If we take a look at the parcels out ahead of that, looking around Lamar, this is going to be about, uh, where are we at, 23Z, 6 p.m., Definite high-based, very high dew point temperature spreads. Dew point of 41. So we're not going to see a whole lot of severe weather out of that. Probably some wind gusts. And if the wet bulb zero level is low enough, there could be hail potential. But I certainly don't see tornadoes in this kind of environment. The photograph kind of on the marginal end. Down there in Oklahoma, it is May. We always have to be concerned about surprise severe weather events. And there is some decent moisture right there around Altus and Hobart. So we're going to drop the sounding right in the middle of that moisture. It is very well capped. Capping at 750 to 800 millibars. That's it right there. You can see that extensive convective inhibition area. So it's going to be a tall order trying to get anything to break that cap. And the moisture, not that impressive. We start out with a 64 degree dew point, but as we rise through that layer, we rapidly get into drier air. By the time we're up to 850 millibars, up at about 5,000 MSL, that dew point is around 3 Celsius, which is going to be about 37 Fahrenheit. And it gets even worse. Zero's dew points up at about 8,000 feet. So there is a lot of dry air aloft. And we can analyze that in a similar manner for Kentucky. By late afternoon, not much of that moisture reaching that area. So we're talking about that area. The theta E value is not that great. We put the sounding right in the nose of that moisture. That's going to be around uh, Lexington. The moisture definitely better. Start out with 64 degree dew point. Holding on to 55, 56 dew points up at 850. And not much capping, so likely we will see something fire. Now the hodograph does show some curvature and some zero through one kilometer shear. The right motion vector towards the east-southeast. And that's going to sweep out some decent SRH values of about 100 to 200 there. 
So probably what we're going to see is numerous cells trying to organize, but the instability just not really all that great. And the evolution looks something like this. Very spotty activity around Lexington. Then taking a look up in Minnesota, definite storms developing across the northern half of the state this afternoon. That's about 5 p.m. right there, and they form up into an MCS after dark, moving through northern Wisconsin, and dying out around Green Bay and Oshkosh around 1 a.m. We look at the parcels ahead of those cells near peak heating. That's probably not the best way to do it. We should look at the theta E to look at the optimal environment. And you can see those theta E values not really that high. So there you go. There's the parcels. Looks kind of like a cool environment. 70 degrees, dew points in the lower 50s, and some positive area right there. Not much capping. Numerous cells. And that photograph looks like a straight line photograph. Doesn't really favor either the left or right mover. So there you go. Looking at another hot one, especially east of the Cap Rock in Texas, 106 at both Wichita Falls and Abilene, those will break the records by about 5 to 7 degrees. Also widespread 90s through Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi. The heat just keeps on coming for tomorrow. 106 at Childress, 104 at Wichita Falls, and 98 at Waco. And some of that heat starting to spread east into Georgia, the Carolinas, and Alabama. And heat also showing up in Colorado, 82 at Alamosa, 91 at Grand Junction. Those will both be tying the record for the date. And the heat just keeps on coming for Friday. Holding on to those near 100s in Texas, but... We are really starting to break out a lot of records in the Carolinas, Virginia, the Appalachians, widespread, mid-90s, and even 100 showing up in North Carolina. For Saturday, the heat continues spreading into the northeastern U.S., looking at mid-90s in the Washington, D.C. area, low 90s around New York City, and 92 at Burlington, Vermont. And we're starting to see the appearance of record lows. Colorado, Wyoming, going below freezing in many areas. 31 for Denver, tying the record set just three years ago. And Casper, Wyoming, dropping to 25. And I think by Sunday, we finally broke in the heat wave. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, that does show 89 at Washington, Dulles for Sunday. That's going to be the last of the heat, returning to seasonal levels through much of the southern U.S. And another cold one for Wyoming and northern Colorado. Big Rig Steve, he is driving south from Wisconsin into Illinois, expecting to make a delivery later this afternoon. And he's on the backside of that mess around Chicago. Some very cold conditions, lower 50s right now. That's going to be about where he is, 2200 overcast. That's going to be stratus and stratocumulus. And there you go. There's the view from the truck. There's the 2200 foot overcast ceiling. A little bit of light rain coming down, but overall he is way back on the backside of that convective system. The roads, they look fairly dry. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Got a quick note from Jacob McMillan. He says, I love your forecasting process. When I first started, I was just pointing out features instead of trying to understand their relationships. I'm still working on that, but your guidance is very helpful. I appreciate that, Jacob, and thank you very much for supporting the program. We'll be back on Friday for the next installment of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and a great Thursday. Take care and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye-bye.